ITR boxing. You heard it here first. Pretty cool videos. And I heard they're also in HD. ITRboxing.com. Virgil Ortiz definitely feels like he's like the underground double XL unsigned hype. Uh, the critics choice, the buzz of the underground. He's got every fight he's won has been by knockout. Seems like something special. Jose Ramirez says that he's amazing. What's your expectation for the 2021 for Virgil Ortiz? You know, I see, I see Virgil Ortiz too. He's definitely should be a world champion this year. He's uh, steamrolled through the opposition. You know, the guys that we felt are, that were going to give him rounds, he's, uh, you know, he, he's either knocked them out or broken them down. He, um, he himself too. I feel he just needs more work, more rounds to. To, so that he can, uh, you know, you could pretty much see where he's at amongst the rest of the welterweight division. Uh, and you mentioned Jose Ramirez, right? Mm -hmm. the, the super lightweight. Um, you know, depending on what Ramirez does at super lightweight, I, I know he has uh, he's on collision course to uh, to unify with with Taylor. So I mean, depending if he if he accomplishes that, hey, why not? You know, why not go? You know, go up against a, a Virgil Ortiz at uh, at one forty seven. But um, I just don't think they'll do it because they're sparring partner and friends. So I don't yeah. see those two. But maybe you know, money changes everything. That's another thing too. I, I I mean, you just mentioned the name, but right, they're 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 the same. They're sparring partners. They uh, they have the same trainer. But um, I mean, all business aside, who who knows? And uh, he's uh, he's he's definitely Golden Boys. Uh, you know, he's he's one of their uh, their main uh, you know, prizes right now at the moment. Yeah, he's, he's. I think the biggest gift for Virgil Ortiz, and this is gonna sound crazy, is Edgar Berlanga, because everyone was saying about Virgil, he needs more rounds, he needs more rounds, and then Virgil or Edgar comes around, and he's knocking everybody out in one round, and now everyone throws the. Well, this guy really needs the rounds. Virgil's doing fine. Virgil's going to the third, fourth, fifth. And I feel like it's funny how that burden we were throwing on Virgil is going to probably completely not get thrown on him as much while Edgar Berlanga is now knocking everybody out in one round. Well, Ber Berlanga's exciting. Don't don't get me wrong, but he's I, I don't think he's nowhere near um, uh, Ortiz's uh, class right now. I th I feel he still has more to more rounds to go. Virgil, same thing. I mean, he he doesn't have that many rounds, but in terms of experience with opposition, um, you know, Virgil is overall the better fighter. But hey, why not? It, it, that that'll be a slugfest. The chat has a question. Virgil Ortiz should be fighting that guy Boots, and that by that guy Boots they mean Boots Ennis. What are your thoughts on if he fought Boots Ennis? Be an interesting fight. Boots in is very, very good fighter. He uh, actually he uh, he just fought this weekend, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, that that's about the only thing. Ah, geez, the only thing when anytime you mention a uh, a fighter that's uh, who's he, who's he promoted? He's with PBC. B and B Promotions. We're B &B little promotions. Cameron, uh, little Cameron Duncan. Him and Brandon Lee are the Cameron Duncan fighters. Cameron Duncan. Okay. Cameron Duncan, that's um, that's that manager, correct? He's, it's uh, the manager of a lot of fighters in the past: uh, Terrence past Crawford, Bradley. Tim Bradley, Jesse Vargas, Rios. Okay, yes, yes. Okay, I mean, yeah. If the opportunity presents itself, why not? Um, he, um, you know, he's he's a uh, overall. He's just he's had more rounds. He's had uh, you know, just there's more um. We've just seen a lot more with the rounds, but Virgil, he himself has just, he's just knocked everybody out. So it, it'll be an interesting matchup to see where, uh, where each guy is at. It's sort of like a crossroads, whoever wins uh, goes on to bigger, better things. Well, this is the way I look at it. It's, it kind of reminds me of Daniel Dubois versus Joe Joyce, where you have two guys that everyone says these guys are prospects and instead of both of them going to get a world title, which is better for everybody's pockets, 
let's have them fight, but let's also not put these guys down. And if one guy loses, they don't have to start all over again. They're still a really good fighter and they can get back to that promised land because in order for us to get a fight like Boots versus Virgil Ortiz, where it's they're both knocking out everybody they fight, they're both extremely good. We both want to see this fight we have to make it so they, they want it and they realize even if they lose, they get paid and they get respect. Correct. Yeah. That was, that's a good example right there. That, that fight took place a few weeks ago with, uh, with Joyce, with the, with the KO, uh, you know, both were undefeated. Both were the future of, uh, British boxing. So they decided, Hey, why not? Um, definitely. We haven't seen the end of Dubois. I'm sure we're going to get more of him. So, That'll be, you know, that'll be the, the 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 exception here too. You know, you you'll get, you know, win or lose. I think you're still gonna get to see the best from both guys. You know, after that fight, if they were to, to meet each other. I mean, I th- I just put the onus on the sanctioning bodies. They just put a guy from Poland that I've never heard of in with Triple G and made him fight him. So can one of the sanctioning bodies put uh, Jerome Boots Innes and Virgil Ortiz at one and two? Like, can you guys just put these guys close together to put the pressure? You know, it's it's strange how the sanctioning bodies work. Uh, it's how the politics of boxing are. How it's it's like when when we're kids watching WWE and then there's WCW. It's kind of like, man, could can these guys could this champion just fight the champion in this in, in this? There's just so much to it. You know, with the sanctioning, but but that's something that's a, that that's something that can be done. Yeah, I mean, that's I'm gonna steal that, but I'm always gonna give you credit for saying that originally. Is that's a great way of looking at it? It's kind of like thinking about uh, can Hulk Hogan wrestle Ric Flair, and you're like, well, they both wrestle on Saturdays, but there's yeah. all these loopholes, the networks, and all that, but. When you watch pro wrestling, you get all the the hoopla and the cool stuff. And for me, I really liked the hot women that would walk some wrestlers out. That was my big thing. But you never really (laughs) – There you go, right? I was always – what was my favorite? My favorite was Medusa. I liked Medusa in WCW. (laughs) Yeah, but um, uh, now we're going going down a creepy old man path. But um, that's a good way of thinking about it is that – it really is just a sport and it's about fist fights and it's about who's the best, but there is these things called network network politic, poli- uh, politics. But beyond that, we all sign contracts in our life and they're hard to get out of. And that's the big thing that boxing gets held up by are these exclusive contracts. That's always been the issue. I think a lot of fighters have been, uh, they've been held hostage by, by these contracts, by these agreements that they have with uh, promoters, uh, you know, managers. In the most case, you know, you had, you had Don King back in the days who pretty much made a living of uh, holding fighters hostage. A good example was, uh, was that heavyweight he had that was very, very good, but never seemed to make, just never seemed to got to catch a break. Um, Witherspoon, Witherspoon was a good example who, Tim Witherspoon, remember a terrible Tim Witherspoon? Yep. That was a perfect example, right? That guy, that guy could have beaten everybody and anybody in, in that era, but for some reason he never became champion. You know, he was hostage. Uh, and, and there, there you go with the contract. It, it all came down to the contracts that that he signed. And you know, a lot of the times, some of these promoters they dangle these contracts over fighters, and then that's what hurts. That's that's what hurts boxing in the long run. It really does because we're just showing up, you and me, where it's Lukey, big dog Lukey, it's my man Miguel. We're showing up. We might have a pen and paper, we might have a laptop, or we might have a beer and a hot dog in our hand, but we're just going to see a fight. And we just want to see the best. And oftentimes the fighters want to fight the best, but then it's the people investing the money in the fighter want the most money back from their investment. And that's where we get into this thing where it's like, well, how can we all be happy? And, and unfortunately, it's a business. It, it boxing is a business. the The boxers are like the product. You know, eventually, they're the product that's in. They're the talent that's in. You know, and 
when there's no no use for them anymore when their better days are behind them it's like okay well let's move on to the next and that's just what it is so uh as as boxing fans sometimes we just want to see fights we want to see our favorite fighters and, and we don't we don't see that part of it, you know of it i've 